okay? It's like that. Reality is not what we think it is, okay? It is definitely much different. I mean, I, and, then, and now he goes so far as to say, okay, what we talked about last week, just to, uh, to go on, okay? Because uh, in the book, which I'm going to hand out sheets, but we're, we're moving on a little bit, was that uh, it's brought down in the name of the Baal Shem Tov that we said that people have different levels of soul, right? We have the lowest and the medium and the higher, and then you have two peripherals. So the nefesh, not only is it the nefesh anchored in your body, it also has an extension. It extends into your possessions. It extends into your, uh, I believe, your animals. Okay, let me just get the text exactly here. Okay, possessions, clothes, that's your lowest part of your soul is manifest, is extended beyond your body, right? Into servants, employees, and animals, and physical possessions, right? Your soul is your car, right? Or whatever, okay? Some people, you know, employees, animals, right? Your dog, as we know that some people have dogs that look exactly like their masters. What a <laughs> phenomenon. What is that about, right? And then the person's next level of soul is ruach. Okay, so the ruach extends to what we're getting into, a person's spouse, friends, and enemies. Okay? Spouse, friends, and enemies, which is what we're getting to. Is the enemy, our basic definition of enemy is anybody that uh, is in the way of your peace. Okay? It could be something very subtle. It could be something massive. Okay? It doesn't matter. The la language of oyev in Hebrew and the Torah, enemy, is there. There is a reality of it. And, and believe it or not, here we're going to go through steps in how to transform it. Okay? Not only in our own circles, but then eventually in our own circles, then it moves out into the general community and the world. Okay? The next level of soul is called neshama, the highest level related to the brain, mostly manifest through the mind. And it extends into a person's progeny, his children, his Torah insights, right, and students. So they, those are his neshama. Now, he goes to, to, now she didn't bring down this text that I brought down at the end of the class last time, which was that if a person has a tsar, a pain, a problem with any one of these, your possessions, right, your animals, or your friends, your enemies, or your kids, right, it is a reflection of some blemish in one of these areas that needs to be fixed. For example, if a person has a problem with his car, like me, okay, uh, okay, or whatever it is, right, it could be animals get sick, your pets get sick, or he's just a bad dog, right, or I had animals that pooped in the best room of my house growing up, really, what was wrong with this picture, and got away with that, doggy door and everything, but no, the dogs insisted on making in the best room in the house, okay? So it says, if you have any problem with any of those, it's a, it's a blemish in your actions. If there's something wrong with your actions, your actions need to be corrected. You have to correct what's in your actions and then you won't experience, you won't have tsar from those things. If a person has a blemish in his ruach, in his speech, okay? Lashon Hara, or he, maybe he just doesn't speak nicely. You know, it could be in, su in most subtle ways, because everybody's on a different level. Everybody's on a different level. So if a person has a blemish in his speech in one way or another, so then he ends up with having a reflection of problems in his friends, spouse, spouse is a big one, and enemies. People will speak bad about him. Why are people speaking bad about me all the time? You have to check, a person has to check themselves out where am I not speaking correctly. And it doesn't have to do just do with Lashonara. Right? Are you giving compliments? Are you appreciating people? Do you appreciate everybody for everything that they do and say thank you? It's not good, your mental appreciation. Okay? Don't assume that people will know it. Right? So a lot goes into to language. When the Havetz Chaim came out with his book, Guard Your Tongue, 
I believe one of the other Gedoli who saw the book of this young scholar, the Havetz Chaim, says, wow, what a fantastic book. But he's got to make now more editions of the book about more about speech. This is only one little thing. It's a big, huge uh, concept. So, and then, the final, if a person has an issue as a problem with his thoughts, so then the, uh, the, the, uh, the reflection comes back to him in his children or his divrei Torah or his pot- expression of his potential. He can't express his potential. Students or anything like that. So if a person has any tsar with that, so then he has to think, okay, where am I? And I had an incident this week with it. I really did. And I haven't come to the end yet, but when I do come, I'm going to be happy to share with you. Okay? Somebody promised to be there at a certain time to help us out and do something who was completely, just blew us off. Okay? Now, I was not happy. <laughs> okay? But I realized there must be something in me that, that doesn't follow through with plans 100%. So I'm still checking myself out, and I think I'm working on it. Where do I need to follow through, and with certain with with commitments that I make, okay? Maybe commitments to myself, okay, or commitments to my children, or something like that. You understand? You guys gonna have to use this rule. Hold on to it. Use each other, you know, and, and, to, re- and to, to reflect back to each other. If you have one of these experiences which has a high emotional charge to it, right, you have to know it's, it's sent from God for you to grow. It's a reflection back to you. Do not blame the other person. Do not throw it on the other person. You have to fix yourself first, okay? And so... We just discussed now how we have all these levels of soul. We discussed now how they extend beyond our physical bodies into our possessions, children, animals, and, and, and the like. Okay?